Well, I'll say hallelujah to that. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Turn around and tell your neighbor, happy Sabbath day to you. Happy Sabbath, 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 Sabbath day, day to you and you and you, you and you and you and you and you. And you, and you. Are you blessed to be here? Yes. Hello, okay. Sister Louise. How are you? Good. How you doing today? Good. Good, good to go see you. Happy Louis. Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath day to Sabbath. everyone. Amen. It's better because it's, it's getting better because. Well, I tell you guys, I've been getting some comments on Sabbath day. I love that we have Sabbath day on Sabbath. Saturday, amen? amen. I have been getting letters from inmates telling me how they have converted to Saturdays. Amen. amen. I, yeah. I get some of them say, you know what? I've always believed that. But man's got his hooked on Sundays. Well, that's so true. Man has his hooked on Sunday, but he don't have us hooked on Sundays anymore. We're thankful that we know what the Sabbath day is. Am I knocking Sunday people? No, sir. No, ma'am. I'm sure not. I'm not knocking them at all, but I'm just glad we did what God told us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I think that is really cool how some of the inmates is transferring themselves to Sabbath day on Saturday. I think it's really, really cool. But anyway, God is good all the time. Oh, I don't oh, care what day of the week it is. God is good. Yes. One of my favorite sayings is this this morning. It's all good. Oh. It's all good. Yeah. Everything is good. You see, God has everything under control. Are you with me this morning? Yeah, yeah. I want you to take your Bibles. I want you to go to the book of Acts. And we're going to be uh, in a couple of chapters. But I do want to start off in Acts 11, number 24. Acts 11, 24. While you're getting there, let me say this. I feel privileged and honored today to say it's all good. Because when we can say it's all good, it means that God has blessed us, God has helped us, God has got us up, God has brought us here today, amen. I'm thankful that we have a church and come, that we can come and worship and praise our God, amen. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about Barnabas and probably a few other people this morning. Well, Mark's going to be one of them. But I want you to go to Acts 11.24 because we have to read this to get started because it's very important of what we're going to be learning today. I don't know about you today, but I come to hear the Word of God. Amen. I don't know about you today, but I come today to expect something. And I don't know about you today, but I pray that you have a teachable spirit. Amen. Amen. Do you have a teachable spirit today? Yes, sir. When you leave this place today... I want you to be able to say, I learned something today. And no, I'm not here for the glory. It's for this man right above me, right here. Amen. Amen. We're here for the glory of God. We're here to learn all that we can possibly learn about him. Amen. As Sister Sue and Sister Debbie has already said, we can read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, but sometimes we'll go, whoa, things highlight to us. Well, that's actually what happened to me on this. I never really thought much about Barnabas. Never really have. And when I, when I, when the Lord gave me this scripture the other morning, whenever that was, probably a month or so ago, I'm not sure. But, you know, I read that and I thought, what a good man. I want that person that has to come and look at this old dead body laying in that coffin to say he was a good man. Amen. Not for me but for the glory of God. That's right. And see, that's what happened with a lot of these people in the Bible, like Barnabas. Are you there? Amen. If you're there, say amen. amen. Acts 11.24 says this. Now listen carefully, because it's so, so important, and we're going to need this, okay? For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. I tell you, i got to stop there for just a second because that's so important. Sister Pye, or Brother Scott, if you don't mind, I need just a little bit more volume. For he was a good man. Are you a good person this morning? Amen. But now here's the next clinker. Are you full of the Holy Ghost and of faith? Amen. 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 Now if you're full... Well, let me back up. If you're good, okay, that's wonderful. Thank you, brother. If you're a good person, that's great, okay? I don't know what that is keeps clicking, but I do know this. God is in control this morning, amen? Right. 
Right. We know this morning that if we are a man or a woman and we're of good, if we are of greatness, and if we have the Holy Ghost, and if we have faith, we can move their mountains. Amen? Yeah. Okay, it goes on and it says, and much people was added unto the Lord. Come on now. And much people was added unto That's the right. Lord. That's what we preach and teach all the time in this church is to yep. pull people in. Yep. And it may not be into this building, but it is to pull them yes. in yes. to the Woo. kingdom of God. It is to pull them in to say, man, I'll never forget that old bald-headed man. I'll never forget him. He was a loud mouth, but boy, he saved my soul, and he let me know who Jesus was. Oh, I'll never forget who that old gray-haired lady was that wore that hat all the time. She told me who Jesus was. You see, that makes us great in God's Amen. glory. That makes us representatives. That makes us apprentices. Huh? That makes us disciples. Bottom line, that makes us great people of God. Amen. But now do you notice what that scripture said? He was a good man. But do you notice it goes farther than that? Yep. I know a lot of good men. Uh-huh. I know a lot of good women. Yep. Okay? But if they are not, oh, it's going to get good. You guys are going to wake up, man, because this is going to get gooder and gooder. Amen? I know a man that was named Barnabas that was not only good, but he was full hey, of the Holy hey, Ghost. Yeah. Oh, he was full yeah. of faith. Then, I think you should have said great. Made him a great man. Yep. <clears throat> because, see, if he was full of the Holy Ghost, and if he was full of faith, and he was a great man, my goodness, people, what else can you ask for? Amen? Amen. What else can you ask for? I don't know, but I know one thing. God says, Barnabas, I want to use you. Amen. Sister Bye, I want to use you. Amen. I imagine the Lord is saying, Debbie, I want to use you. Come on. Amen. Right. He told Barnabas that. Yep. yep. Because not only was he a good person, that the Lord knew he was a good man full of the Holy Ghost and faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. You see, we're out to build a kingdom Amen. on earth. They can get to that place called heaven. That's right. Amen. That's right. How do we build a kingdom on earth of people that pulls in to get them to heaven? You got to have everything that that scripture just said. Yes. You have to have a good nature. You have to have integrity. You have to have the Holy Ghost, and you have to have faith. It's all good. Amen. Amen. What a guy! It's all good. Barnabas was such a great man of God. Now listen to this. Possibly if it wasn't for him being an encourager. Are you an encourager today? Do you try Amen. your best to encourage people about who God is? Yes. Okay? And a true man of faith. Do you have faith like you should? Listen yes. to this. We most likely might not have the book of Mark. You see, Barnabas was a wonderful man. And you're going to learn later in this sermon today what Barnabas did for Mark and got Mark into the, the Christian life. Amen? Amen? Now go on a couple of pages or two. I want you to go to Acts 13, 13. Probably two or three pages farther. That's all you got to do. And I want us to catch something here. Acts 13, 13. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos and they came to Perga, in Pamphylia, and John departed from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now, we don't know why John took off at this point. And I don't know if we'll ever know it, but here is my point this morning. It's all good. Because you see, later, Paul, even Paul, now Paul was a man of God, remember? But even Paul wouldn't take Mark on another journey so Barnabas stepped up. Amen? Amen. And he said, come on, Mark, go with me, please. Now, I got a point here this morning. Sometimes we want to give up on people. Yep. Sometimes we want to lose our encouragement 
to yep. people. But do you know this is amongst many stories in the Bible where somebody stepped up and said, come on, Mark. Come on, guy. Yep. We got something to do here. We got Amen. things to do. Whereas most people, they cut people off. Amen? Amen. So, Paul, what a guy. I think Paul is a good guy. Yes. But for some reason, Sister Emily, Paul didn't want to take Mark any longer. Now, there's something there that we may never know, but we had that man named Barnabas step up and say, come on, buddy. You know there's people like that, and there's people like that today. Do you believe me? Oh, yeah. Go a couple more pages to Acts 15. A page or two, Acts 15. Maybe three, because we're going all the way to number 36. Acts 15. I can't help but think of some of the people in the church when I want to say this part right here. Barnabas took Mark under his wing, per se. I've done that with so many people in my life. I'm talking from friends to employees to people at the church. Amen? Listen to me, people. Some will make it, some won't. Some will succeed, some will not. But I do know this this morning. I do know that if we continue to try and continue to do what we need to do, and if we continue to be the encourager that we need to be, God says, take them under your wing, tell them about me, tell them about the glory of God, show them that Holy Spirit, show them that faith, and build them up. I will credit you for that. Is this, does, it, does the Bible tell us that when we get to heaven that the Lord would have some treasures for us? Amen. Amen. Does, it say, does he say that he would have some uh, prizes for us? Yep. Does it say he would have some benefits for us? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Eternity. I want them. How about you? Amen. Amen. I want them crowns. I don't have one of them 401k things or whatever them are. <laughs> But I know my zip code is going to be 77777. Amen. Amen. And if my zip code is 77777, that's that place called heaven. Right. Amen. We are going to know without a shadow of a doubt that God has us under control. Right. You know what? The devil's a liar. Amen. Right. The right. devil is a liar, and the devil's trying all he can to do. But guess what? The devil's a liar. Right. He's under my feet. I don't care how we snap, crackle, pop. Amen. Amen. We're going to have us a Rice Krispie sermon today. Amen. 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 We're going to be singing on Rice Krispies here in a minute. Click, 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 click. But I do know one thing this morning. If we take a person under our wing, oh, somebody's looking at me like, well, I don't like her. Well, she stinks. I can't do that. Well, God says you better do it. God says you just got done saying you was a good person. God just got done saying you claimed you had that Holy Spirit. And God just got done saying, oh, you said you're full of faith. Well, if you're full of faith and you're full of the Holy Spirit and you're a good person, no smell is going to stop you from taking anybody. Amen. Amen. That's right. Listen, guys. Acts 15, 36. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. <laughs> that reminds me of visiting churches. I like to go visit churches sometimes, and I like to kind of go see what the preaching's like, and I kind of like to see the if the Holy Spirit is moving in that place, Amen. I don't know if I don't know if uh, I don't know if it's because God wants us to do that. I think God puts us in position sometimes to pray for things. What do you think? I think God puts us in positions to pray for churches, to pray for pastors, to pray for the people of the church. And believe me, when you get out and you visit and you look around a little bit, you're going to see that a lot of prayer is needed. Mm. But you see? I don't think it's anything here. 
Number 37 says this. And Barnabas determined to take them with John, whose surname was Mark. Now we're going to get into talking about Mark a little bit here this morning. Because I do know one thing. I love this word right here. Determined. Yes. See, Barnabas was determined. How determined are you today of serving God? Amen? How determined are you today to be a follower of God to help Him win the kingdom of God? Well, Pastor, there's sure not many people in the church. Well, let me tell all of you something. Go out and do some visiting. You'll say that about every church. That's right. That's right. You see, the church population is falling. It says in the Bible that towards the end days that the numbers would decrease. Yep. God also says he's coming back after a remnant. But thank, thank God for Barnabas today because Barnabas was determined. Barnabas was determined to help people in his fight for God. We can go all the way back into the Old Testament and find out about Daniel, the three Hebrew boys. We can read about Job. We can read about so many of them back there that did the same thing. Amen? Amen. Why didn't Paul take Mark? I first read that and I thought, that was my favorite buddy, but I don't know about that anymore. <laughs> but I do know this. There's a reason for everything. And we're going to find that reason this morning. But 38 says, But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them to Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Now that scripture right there tells us that Mark departed. Okay? Mark got away from that. Hey, Pastor Scotty, why don't you come up here and mess this thing on the bottom while I'm preaching. Let's see if some of this popping might go away, okay? Maybe some wires in the back of there. I think it might be in the microphone itself. Well, I've, I've moved everything and I can't make it pop, so I, I'm wondering what it is. I think it's that thing back there. But I know this. Barnabas had determination. That's right. That's right. Do you have determination? Yes. Amen. Amen. What is your goal? What is your determination outlook? What is your determination telling you this morning? Is it telling you to step back? Is it telling you to step forward? Is it telling you to turn left? Is it telling you to turn right? Amen. Is it telling you to teach God's Word? That's right. Amen. Is it telling you to teach children? Amen. You see, guys, we don't know. But we do know this. I heard Pastor Scotty say this earlier. I may not know what your call is, but I know someone who does. That's right. And see... I really doubt that Paul or Mark or any of them could go up and tell Barnabas what his call was. No, that's right. But I do know this. Barnabas seen hope in Mark. Paul had other things that he had to go take care of. Yep. Now we have to look at it like this. Let's be Christian. Let's be Christians this morning, okay? okay. God has probably told Paul, you need to go this way, because i got more people for you to help. And if you'll read the Bible even farther, you'll see where Paul went out and started doing what? Getting churches rolling right. through Timothy, through Titus, on and on and on. Barnabas, you take Mark. Mark looks like he's been neglected. So Barnabas... Not only was a good man, not only was full of the Holy Spirit, not only was full of faith, but he had what we need, determination. Amen, that's right. <clears throat> you see, I have determination in life. I'm determined that I can live for God. I'm determined that no matter what the world throws at me, I can serve God. That's right. Amen. You know, when was the first, guys? Was it Wednesday? Wasn't it Wednesday? Was that the first? I think it was. January yeah, 1st? Was. Yeah. Well, we just kind of did whatever, and we didn't really see a whole lot of people that day, and we just kind of did our own thing and worked around the yard and in the yard and all that good stuff. But Thursday, I went, 
I'm going to tell you now, that devil was after us. <laughs> that, I know he was after me. I don't know, can I say that for you, Sister Sue? Was he after you Thursday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Brother Scotty, let's just try that, man. I do know this. It didn't take me long to think, uh-huh, first day of the year to see people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Devil, you know what? You're a liar. Amen. I was determined to overcome the situation. You remember, guys, we prayed. We thanked God for the old year. We claimed God would bless us for the new year coming. Yep. We claimed that 2020 spiritual vision. We claimed that 2020 perfect life in God. Well, it's the devil's job to tear us down. Barnabas, full of determination, said, Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. Let's go out and do something. Look at number 39. And the contention was so sharp between them <laughs> that they departed asunder. One from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark. Do you guys see that? Yep. And sailed unto Cyprus. Now listen carefully. Barnabas not only was the man that he was, but he also had an encouraging attitude toward the young leader probably saved Mark's ministerial life. You remember the story about Billy Graham? Years and years and years ago, before, he was a preacher. He wanted to go out and hear God's Word. He heard about a big revival-type convention-type something going on, Holy Spirit-filled meeting, camp meeting, in a big old, what was it, a big old like, Coliseum, I think. He was one of the last to get there. He walked in. Now look, guys. No seats. <laughs> place was full. I mean, it was supposed to be a Holy Ghost packed service. The place was full. You know what he did? He started walking out. Huh. But some Barnabas, right? Yeah. Some Barnabas said, hey, 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 sir, sir, sir. Hey, brother, come here. I'll find you a seat. Excuse me, excuse me. You guys don't mind just kind of scoot over here a little bit they're set billy graham what did billy graham turn out to be was that a barnabas or was that a man of god full of faith full of the holy spirit full of determination full of integrity that was free. I gave you that free this morning. Isn't God good? Amen. Barnabas, forgiving and encouraged attitude toward the young leader probably saved Mark's ministry life. I totally believe that. I want all of us to look around in our lives, in the church, out of the church, look around. Do you see somebody that you feel like God has pointed out to you that has a potential Whose world you could change with just a little bit of your encouragement and your help. You see, guys, the church is kind of lazy anymore. Amen. We don't want to do an encouragement, and oh, we're afraid to get too close to them. Oh, we're afraid they're going to want too much. Oh, we're afraid it's going to take too much of our time. But Barnabas said, I'm here. You know, the Bible says, Jesus says, I'm here. I am. Here I am. I think about the bird. Has everybody heard of a sandhill crane? You heard of that? Well, they fly, they fly and fly and fly great distances, guys, across continents. I'm talking across the oceans and across the continents. In flight of them particular birds... Not one bird can lead all the time. 
but it takes a special bird. So in these groups of these birds that are up there flying, God made sure that there was enough of them, listen to me, that could get out in the front and not only lead the way to where they're going, but create the wind turbulence to go around to make it lighter on the other birds. I can't help but to think this this morning. That's what we're to do for people. Amen. You may not have to be a leader of a church, but you can be a leader of what God has for you. That's right. Because you've got to look at it like this, girls. Amen. Think about this. We've been through the turbulence, and we'll always go through turbulence. But God says, you know what? I want to use you. Amen? Amen. I want to use you to break that turbulence. Amen? I want to use you to break that turbulence. I want to use you to see if you can help your brother, help your sister get into the kingdom of God. Those birds, when they lead that flock, breaks that wind, breaks that turbulence. Not only are they getting to where they need to go, but they made it a little bit easier. My poor little wife, I'll never forget when she first became a Christian, when she first was saved, when she first gave her life to the Lord. She was so pumped up for God. But after a while, she started deflating a little bit. You know why? There's no encouragement out there, guys. There's no encouragement out there. There's, there's nobody that seems like they want to help you. There's nobody that acts like they want to... They want to take you under their wing. Amen? That's right. We're about to find out if that clicking is coming from this other microphone. Amen? Okay. God said that we could be a Barnabas. God said that we can get out and preach God's Word. God said that we can be one of them Sand Hill Cranes. If you haven't heard of that, you have now. They break the turbulence. That's what you and I are supposed to do, is break the turbulence and let these people get through that. Amen? Amen. The devil is alive and the devil's not winning this day. I'm looking around to see if any of you could be a bird this morning, but you look like dead birds, okay? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, yeah. I was going to get one of them here do an illustration of a bird, but none of you look like you can fly today. <laughs> But see, God is in control. Yes, turn me down a little bit, then I can go ahead and bring this mic up closer. Well, I think we're right. I think the clicking must have been in the other one. Have I heard? Have you heard it since? No. Okay, well, that's what we got to do. I don't think this picks up, but it's okay. God is good. I want to be a Sand Hill Crane. How about you? Yeah. Although some of you look like you want to be a vulture. <laughs> We was talking about buzzards yesterday, baby. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe just a little bit more, Brother Scott. No, that's good. I'll hold it up here. Vultures and buzzards are needed. Right. Oh, they're gross. They and oh, they're ugly. And oh, they're nasty. They're just plum gross. Amen? But we have to have them. Oh, that's another whole sermon in itself, what we talked about buzzards yesterday. <laughs> and vultures. And you know... God has an imagination. Oh, yeah. We don't like vultures, and we don't like buzzards, and we see them. Have you ever been down a old country road close to dark, and you see them setting up in the trees, and it looks like you're driving down through the monster land or something mm -hmm. like that? They're pretty evil looking, aren't they? But you know, God made them. Yeah, God made them for special reasons. Amen? And I know what they are. And we'll tell them later, won't we, Sister Sue? Because it's a sermon in its own. I'm not going to steal your... Don't. Okay, I'm trying my best to not steal your 2020 vision, okay? <laughs> Do you still have 2020 spiritual vision for the year yes, 2020? Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. I hope none of you is still back in the year of 2019 yes. when you was all blurry looking. Amen. <laughs> and you know what, guys? We don't have to put these on to have 2020 vision. You know what you got to do? Here's the simple answer I need to give you. You really need to be a Barnabas. A good man, good person, full of the Spirit, full of faith, full of determination, 
full of integrity. I can just see Paul saying, okay guys, I got other things to do. The Lord has led me in another direction. I wonder if Martha was going, you ever done that? Like your kids, sometimes they'll leave you. Your family, sometimes they'll leave you. You look and you go, wow. You see, I'm sure Mark did that. I want us to realize today without Barnabas, we need to read more, we need to study more, we need to really get into that. I just wonder if Mark would have had a ministry if Barnabas would have left him also. Paul was a good man. But why did Paul leave Barnabas? Here's what I want to say. God directed him to. That's right. But do you know this? If you don't, you're fixing to know it. God knows everything. Amen. Am I right, Sister Louise? Do you also believe this? God knew that Barnabas was going to take over. Now, if if God did not know that for some reason that Barnabas wasn't going to take over, he would have kept Paul there. That's right. For a mentor. Yeah. Yep. For a mentor. I believe we're all called to be a mentor. That's right. I think so too. I believe we're all called as men and women of God yep. because we say we have faith we say we have the Holy Spirit in us. As we say sometimes, I wonder what some spirits are in some people sometimes, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I do know one thing. If we have the Holy Spirit, if we have the faith, if we have the determination, if we have the integrity that Barnabas had, I can't help but thank you, Brother Mark, that you used to come here. Yep. You see, I'm not giving myself a feather because all the glory goes to God. I did everything in my power to help that man. Yep. I'm talking everything in my power. Did we not? Everything in our power to help him, to nurture him, to get him around, to do all we could do just to try to be a Barnabas. Try to keep... Do you realize... Listen to me, guys. Look at me. Do you realize the witness tool that Brother Mark could be out in this world? Yeah. Riding around on a buggy with no legs saying, Praise God, hallelujah, I'm so blessed. But it's got to be with seriousness. I love Brother Mark. And I claim someday he's going to be back. But I pray it's not too late. You see, God has a way. We took Brother Mark under our wings and we did all we could do with him we've done the same for other people all the glory goes to him but some reason Paul needed to depart the other way do you believe that was for a reason I do I believe it was really for a reason Amen? amen we must all pull together we must fly as a group do you believe that Help each other and most surely encourage each other. What was the name of my sermon together this morning? I want us all to say it together. Remember, it's all good. You ready? It's all good. One more time. It's all good. Are you glad today that you're a Christian? Are you glad today that you are a Barnabas? Amen. Most importantly, all the time, the leader is breaking the wind resistance for the people that's trying to follow us. Oh, I heard a little thing about sheep yesterday morning. You're my sheep. If I had every one of you put a blindfold on before you come in the church this morning and sit down with your blindfold on, I don't care who I put up here. If it was not me, you would know that, wouldn't you? That's yep. right. You would. Yep. Yeah. You would know it. I don't care if you think, I know somebody sounds just like Pastor Steve. I grant you, I could put him up here and you would know the difference. Mm-hmm. You know why? Amen. Because God says we would know that voice.
I just learned a couple of days ago that over in New Zealand and places like that where all these sheep graze, a couple of shepherds that get together, he's got his group, he's got his group, he's got his flock, and they'll find a big green pasture. Guess what? They let them all, they let all three or four flocks go out in there and mingle and eat and graze all day long. When it starts getting dark. Okay, boys and girls, come on. Every one of them knows exactly where their shepherd is. Every one of them. You hear me, Sister Debbie? It's not, come here, Mark, come here, Scotty, come here, Ricky, come here, Louise. Hey, you know how this way. No, it's not that. Them sheep don't only have names, they do not have tags on them. They're not tagged because the shepherd and the sheep know each other. They learn to follow the shepherd. Where's your shepherd at this morning? Do you guys see your shepherd this morning? Yes. Do you follow him? Yes. Do you follow him like Barnabas? Amen. What a man of God. Amen? Amen. I don't know if you heard this last part or not, but it's worth repeating. Us as a leader, not just for instance in the church, but as a leader of Christianity, are you hearing me this morning? All the time, you must be breaking the wind turbulence for the people that's following you. That's right. Why? To lighten the load. We have to get strong in not only faith, we have to get strong as a Christian to be able to handle the turbulence sure. that the devil gives out. Amen. Has anybody ever been in severe wind turbulence in an airplane? Yeah. Well, if you don't pray, you'll pray then. That's yeah. right. Because I tell you, it feels like that plane is falling out of the sky. It or it feels far. like earthquake hit that airplane. Yeah. And you know, you've... I, I know I've flown so many times it got to be no big deal, but you still wonder, kind of like oh, kind of like that old Sanford guy. Oh, this is the big one. Is this the one that's going to get me? I said that to say this, Sister Sue. We have to break the turbulence. We have to fly in the front, and we have to open up the pass for the people that's trying to come to us. Amen? Amen. The entire flock, let's use the church this morning, pours forth a constant stream of affirming blessings. You see, the more we lead people to Christ, the more we try to build the church, and I don't just mean this church, I mean the church of God, amen, the Christians, the more we try to build that up, I forgot to tell you another thing about these birds. They honk a lot, too. Oh, oh, oh. Now, the next time you go out and talk to somebody, don't be going, oh, oh. My pastor told me to do that. Now, I'm telling you what the birds did. Oh, oh. You know what we should be doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to honk. I'm going to sing hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to shout amen. I'm going to shout Hey, I'll tell you how to open up a conversation. Walk out to somebody in the world and say, Do you know who Barnabas is? They're going to go, Is that even a name in today's vocabulary? Barnabas and Bailey Circus? No, yeah. that's Barnes, Barnes and Bailey, Bailey baby. Barnabas, it? It's not Barnabas. It yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's what you get for thoughting. <laughs> See, Sister Sue, you said that to say this, didn't you? That's right. God's good, isn't he? Oh, wow. Wow. Here's what the Lord told me to write down in closing this morning. Whether honks or, or, or hugs or hallelujahs, encouragement is all good. Everybody stand up. i got something for you. I tell you what, God's on the throne. And you know what? The devil didn't win this service. God is good all the time. And all the, All the time, time. God, God is, is good. good. Oh, you guys are in such sync. Amen. You don't have to go out and honk. You don't. 
You don't have to go out and throw yourself on people. Good. Are you hearing me? Amen. All God is expecting is, Hey, brother. How are you today? The Lord loves you. Hey, brother. The Lord bless you. That would get a conversation going most times. You don't have to go, uh, uh. <laughs> You can go open up a conversation by just speaking of that man called Jesus. Right. 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 Pastor Scotty, I don't know. We need to study a little farther. I just don't know if Mark would have made it. Now, come on, guys. Let's get real here. I don't know that Mark would have made it farther on into his ministry if it would not have been for Barnabas. But I do know this this morning. Barnabas is not going. Is he? No, nope. You know what Barnabas is doing? Thank you, Lord. Thank right. you, Lord. That's right. Am I right? Amen. See, we don't do this thing. No. It's not us. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're, we're called to do that. We're called to be like Barnabas. Amen? Amen. I can't wait to see him now. <laughs> I've been stuck on Paul for years. Amen. I'm ready for Barnabas now. I'm kind of jealous of that name. I wish that was my name. Barney. I'm calling you that. Barney for short. I heard a little... I, yeah. Oh, boy. One of his last name's Fife, right? I got a little story for you. Since you're standing, everybody looks so comfortable. Man and a woman a long time ago, they tried and they tried and they tried and they tried and they tried to have a kid. This went on for years and years and years and years. Wow, they finally got up into their 60s. And she become pregnant with a boy. And they kept looking at each other and they said, that is so odd. We've tried for years and we're finally going to have a boy. That is so odd. So they go on through this little maternity thing. She finally goes to the hospital. She has this baby boy. They're both looking at him. That is so cool. I just can't believe it. It's so odd that we had a baby at this age. Yeah. They all of a sudden looked at each other and said, what are we going to name him? We haven't even thought. We've been so surprised of all this time before having a baby. We haven't even come up with a name. They looked at each other and they said, well, that's odd, isn't it? They said, that's his name, Odd. Oh, no. <laughs> that's what we're going to name this boy, Odd. This boy had the name of Odd all of his life. Later on, he was dying with cancer. He was going down. He was getting sick. He knew he was on his way out of here. His old mom and dad are still alive. Son, we're sorry for giving you that name. No, mom and dad, it's it's all it's it's all good. Would you like first to put something else on your headstone? Oh no, no, no. He said, here's what I want on my headstone. You guys ready for this? Yep. It said, nothing but my birth date and my leaving date. You don't want your name on there? No. He said, take my word for it. Everybody's going to know me. That's right. They never did figure that story out. They bury him. They give him a headstone. All this up there is the date he was born, the date he died. You ready for this part? Every time people would walk through the cemetery, they'd go, He didn't have a name. That sure is odd. <laughs> Isn't that odd? You're right. That's odd. Did all of you catch that? I thought that was a good one, too. I usually can't share stuff like that, but I prayed for that one. Amen. Amen. I did good, did I, baby? Yeah, I did that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Is God good? All the time. Are you ready to be a Barnabas? Yes. Do you have that determination, though? 